Hi guys and welcome to today's video. In today's video, I'll be showing you how you can edit gaming videos in HitFilm 3 Express. We'll be going through basic editing and also more advanced effects such as how to put your own face onto your video with an overlay in the corner or something like that. More advanced editing such as cutting quickly between things and zooming and keyframing and all sorts of things like that. Also adding your own sound effects and music and things like that. So let's begin. Okay, so to start off with, you're going to actually have your recording of you playing the game. So I've just got a quick recording here of me playing a game called Octagon. It's rather old at the moment, but um, anyway, this is it. So. Um, without further ado, you can set in and out points in your trimmer. So this place here is called your trimmer and it's basically where you can trim a clip before you put it into your timeline and it makes it really easy to get precise movements. So just go in somewhere into your clip here, press the play button and at any point you can press I on your keyboard or O and what I does is it sets an in point so where you start your clip starts and O sets an out point or you can just click on these buttons right here. Once you've done that, you can press this button and it will drop it into your main timeline. Now, depending on what your, your sequence of your clips are and what your recording is, then uh, you may want to change the frame rate and such. Mine's at 60 frames per second. Uh, so I'll just click yes to make this change. Now we only have a three minute video which is a bit of a shame, so I'm just going to extend this and actually uh, extend it this way and just to show you there's no sound to this recording but it plays back pretty smoothly in hit film and we've got this you know, me playing this game, which is great now you want to also add some audio be it the in-game audio or your own voiceover uh, it really depends, so I'm just going to add my own voiceover. Now, we can listen to it here. Uh, it actually says... Wow. Whoops, it's coming out through my headphones. Let's just wait a minute. Okay, so this is what it says. This is so cool. Wow, this game is so freaking cool. I love this game. So, pretty much... Uh, it's me rambling on about nonsense. So let's just drag and drop it into the timeline. And again with this audio clip, we can do the same sort of edits that we did with the previous clip in the trimmer. So setting in points and out points. Now depending on how long your video is, you might want to zoom into the timeline. So use this little slider here to show how much zoomed into the timeline is. You are. And now we have this. So we're going to make an edit or two here. Let's just cut the clip right here because I realize I don't actually want this bit where I die and I fall off the screen immediately for no apparent reason. So I'm just going to cut it here. And to do this, we can press C or just click on this slice tool and slice the clip we've selected. We can then go back and move them individually. And then to, um, to move this, uh, left or right, we can slip it so we can slip it, say more left, and now it will skip to afterwards when I start again. This is really useful because then we can make proper cuts and it actually looks really cool and really realistic. So that's how you do some basic cuts like that. And uh, now we're just going to do another bit of an edit. Um, we're going to actually put our face in the corner. So, to do this, drag your face or a video of yourself as you play this game on the very top. Switch back to your normal cursor and extend it to the full length of your video. Depending on the size of your video and how different it is in frame rate and size to your original, it may look different in terms of scale, uh, but you can already see that we can move it around and scale it right in the editor. So if we scale it normally, 
um, it twists and warps like this, so when we scale it, we hold shift, not like that, but we press shift and then we scale it, so that we can scale it in the proportionally so our face doesn't look really weird. And then we can put it right in the corner here, and as we play this, play this back, we can see that we actually have our face in the corner. If this was a video, which obviously this isn't, uh, but if this was a video, then this would play back normally as we were going through it. Now, say we want to, for some part of the video, extend this face to the whole screen. Well, that's easy, just like we did before. Make two slice cuts here and say here. And at this point, we can just scale it all the way up. Uh, put it back in the center by going to controls. And in our transform section here, which is all things to do with movement, we can set our position to be 0, 0 and scale it up as much as we desire. And now for this certain selection of portion of the clip, it'll be full screen. So freaking cool. I love this game. Right, so that's pretty cool. Now there's some more edit things we can do as well. So for example, I say... Wow, this game is so freaking cool. So I'm just going to edit that a bit. I've got this sensor beep sound effect, which I found online. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag and drop it right down here. So when I say, let, we can zoom in and really fine tune where I want the beep to be. So it's around here. So now let me just hide this for a moment. And... I'm just going to make a cut here and another cut where it stops. Right, so now I've got two cuts and I can either delete this or lower the volume on this. I'm just going to delete it and I'm going to just shorten this so it doesn't cover the whole thing and we get sorry which if you were actually swearing uh, then it would actually get rid of the swear word so now this is really cool because there is also loads of stuff we can do with this sort of thing so let's say for example I make a mistake here I can cut both these clips around here and I can also cut these clips here and I've also got this color bars effect you may have seen this on, on some other videos I'm just going to shorten it and put it on my first video layer track and uh, we can like use the like double take effect, sound effect, maybe make it a bit louder down in this properties. And uh, say if we made a mistake, then, well, like a purposeful mistake, for example, something funny, then we can use this. Which is pretty cool. Now, we've done a lot of basic stuff here. So we've got, you know, our our bleeping out and our faces in the corner and all of that but what if we want to add an intro well now we had an intro we also we obviously have to make an intro so if you haven't already made an intro or you haven't got an intro uh, then you know there's other videos out there on how to make intros I've got my personal intro and it's actually longer than the clip itself but I'm just going to put it at the front here and you can see that now as it plays back we've got the intro at the beginning which is pretty cool I've got to admit I like my intro and then we've got our video that editing there is a bit shabby but nevertheless um, that's how we do some basic effects 
However, there's one more thing I want to do. When I say this love, then I actually want this face to be bigger at that point as well. So let's just um, delete that for now. And I'm just going to make this bigger. And I'm just going to do a zooming in on my face. So when I say love, I'm just going to do zoom in on my face. Like so. However, in the editor itself, we can't do uh, more advanced things such as keyframing. So we're going to have to click make a composite shot, and it will make a composite shot out of that image or video, and that way whenever we edit in here, it will remain the same in here. So to give you an example, I'm just going to uh, add a new layer, just a plain, and I'm going to make it white. And you can see that now it updates, which is really cool. Now, excuse me. So we have this clip here, and we're going to have to do something called keyframing. So keyframing is a change or a point in time. So in our scale here, if we create a keyframe or a point in time right here, and create one at the end, it means we've got two saved points in time, whoops, and another one here. So to create a keyframe, all you have to do is click on this button here, and it will create a keyframe for you, and now you can see that smoothly between these two points, it, uh, it smoothly moved between these two points. So at this keyframe here, and to create another keyframe, you don't press the button again, because that turns it off, you have to drag the slider. So I'm just going to zoom into my face here, but now you can see I also want the position to be changed. So this is really easy. All you have to do is click the position tab and change the position in the keyframe. And here I'm just going to make the position 0, 0. And this way, when we play our video back, it zooms in on my face. And so back in here, we've got a zoom. This sounds like a really crazily edited video, and it is because you have never really edit a video in this way. Uh, usually it wouldn't be so fast or anything. But these are some of the basic tools you'll use to edit your games. Uh, for YouTube, and you know, this is not only for games, but for all sorts of other things. Now I haven't covered how to record your videos in this tutorial, because that's a whole other story. But um, I have showed you how to basically edit your games. Now to export your videos, you can either export them straight to YouTube using this place here, or you can export it as a QuickTime on H.264. Now the H.264 is a little bit tricky because uh, a lot of people don't understand the bit rates. Basically what I would do is, if you're going with H.264, make sure the bit rate is at least, say, 50 or something and make it something like this and then export that or you can go into QuickTime don't export it as an H.264 and don't export it as an uncompressed either or a photo um, what you want to do is export it as ProRes 422 uncompressed has like gigabytes per second or per minute so it's pretty pretty high files and it's completely uncompressed every frame it has in there. So you want to choose ProRes, although it will lag your computer out, and I'm depending on what sort of QuickTime thing you have in your computer, if you're in Windows, then it may not run the same, um, and it may not open uh, ProRes files, because they're Apple ProRes files. But nevertheless, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, I hope it was useful to you. Um, if it was, then please like this video, uh, comment below for other videos and other suggestions for videos, uh, and subscribe for more awesome videos like this one. I'll see you guys next week, if not earlier, but probably next week. Yeah, I'll see you guys later. Bye.